This PC has two CPUs, 36 cores, and 72 threads. Today I'm gonna to compare it to this PC with an i7-13700KF and see which one is faster. Time for the weigh-in. This system has two Xeons that are octa-deca-core processors, wow. so 18 cores each. These particular Xeons came out in 2016. All cores have a stock frequency of 2.3 gigahertz, and all cores can turbo up to 2.7 gigahertz. Combined, they have 2.2 megabytes of L1 cache, 9 megabytes of L2 cache, and 90 megabytes of L3 cache. Lastly, the Hydra is running on 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, running at 2133 megahertz. Next up, we're testing the th Thundercat that has the i7-13700KF. This thing has eight P cores, power cores, Hello. and eight E cores, efficiency cores, for a total of 16 cores and 24 threads. This CPU launched at the end of 2022. Now here's where it gets weird. The 13700KF P cores have a stock frequency of 3.4 gigahertz. The E cores have a stock frequency of 2.5. And then the P cores have a max turbo frequency of 5.3 gigahertz, and the E cores have a max turbo frequency of 4.2. What a weird chip. You can see it's got 1.4 megabytes of L1 cache, 24 megabytes of L2 cache, and 30 megabytes of L3 cache. The Thundercat i7 system is running on 64 gigabytes of 6,000 megahertz DDR5 RAM. First, we're testing Cinebench on the Xeon CPUs. You can see in the screen here in Cinebench, the Hydra is running at full capacity on all CPUs. The dual Xeon's got 900 points on the multi-threaded test. And the Xeon single-threaded result is 38 points. Okay, here's the i7 Cinebench result. 1,637. Single thread score, 124 for the i7. That means the i7 was 1.82 times faster in the multi-threaded test and 3.26 times faster than the two Xeons in the single core performance test. Next up is Passmark CPU Mark. The Xeon scored 37,577. The i7 CPU Mark is 49,899. This means the i7 won, and it was about 1.33 times faster. A little closer than the last test. Next up, Times by Extreme CPU test. Unfortunately, you can see that this 3D Mark Extreme CPU test is only using one of the CPUs at 80% capacity. It just doesn't support this crazy core count. Here is the Xeon Times by CPU score. i7 Times by score, 9901. This means the i7 was 1.72 times faster than oh the two Xeons in this test. God. Next up is Geekbench 6 CPU benchmark. And here are the Xeon single core and multi-core CPU results. 955 single core, 6,917 multi-core. i7 Geekbench scores 2,865 single core, 19,536 multi-core score. This means that on the single core test, the i7 was 3.01 times faster, and on the multi-threaded, it was 2.82 times faster. Wow. I think this goes to show that this test was not made to handle all of the cores that the dual Xeon setup can provide, so it was not really a fair test. And now the Xeon CPU Z benchmark. 357.2 single thread and 12,633.2 multi-thread score. And i7 CPU Z score. Multi-threaded 12,676.5, single-threaded 867.4. That makes the i7 2.43 times faster on a single what? core, but a measly 1.0034% faster on the multi-threaded. That means they are neck and neck in a true test of performance involving all cores. Now there's one more important factor to talk about when comparing these systems, and that's price. Right now, two of these exact same Xeons, a motherboard compatible with two of them, and 64 gigs of ECC RAM goes for around $600 Canadian on AliExpress. When shopping for a 13700KF, a decent Z790 motherboard and 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, you're looking at closer to $1,100 Canadian. So that means you're pretty much paying 80% more for the i7 to get near equivalent multi-threaded performance and three times better single core performance. Now, unfortunately for the Xeon system, 
this is not a real world experiment. All these softwares are failing to actually utilize such a massive amount of cores. So for 99.99% .99 of people, in all honesty, you're better off going with the i7. If many of the CPU benchmarks we tried today couldn't even utilize all these cores, imagine how gaming and other day-to-day -day softwares will struggle to actually utilize the power of such a workhorse. The only application I could consider this computer being superior for, potentially, would be server applications or perhaps having multiple virtual machines running off the same system. That's all. It was a fun experiment. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope you learned a little bit about these crazy workstation Xeon CPUs and uh, I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.